There was a time when Sweden ranked as one of the safest places in Europe. Once celebrated for its welcoming immigration policies and humanitarian leadership, it stood as a beacon of diversity. This open arms approach brought a wealth of skills and fresh ideas, enriching its culture and economy. But today, many people in Sweden feel unsafe, questioning the security they once took for granted. Weak minds lead to weak actions, and the 2023 Swedish Crime Survey is a shocking example of that. Involving 64,000 participants, a staggering 20% reported personal offenses, including assault, threats, and robbery. Digging deeper, nearly half were targeted once, but the figures escalated. 29.3% encountered these crimes two to three times. Most shockingly, 27.4% found themselves in the crosshairs four or more times, painting a grim picture of recurring victimization in their own country. Now, these troubling stats are pushing Sweden to urgently rethink its migration policies and tighten security measures. Day by day, crime is rising in Scandinavia, a trend that began in Sweden and now affects Norway and Denmark. This surge is testing the region's identity and values. With immigration seen as a key factor, fear is growing among families. How will Sweden address this problem while staying true to their roots? It's a hard battle with events you won't believe. This is how the Swedish mindset destroyed its safety. Before World War II, Sweden was practically homogenous with a common language and culture. Annually, it saw about 6,000 immigrants, mostly from Germany, Denmark, and Norway. Fast forward to recent decades, and Sweden dramatically leapt into multiculturalism. The country began welcoming a multitude of refugees, not just from Europe, but also from far-flung corners like Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Now the intent was twofold, addressing an aging population and boosting the economy with a new workforce. Little did they know this strategy would horribly backfire. In 2015, Sweden's open-door policy hit a staggering record. The country, known for embracing refugees, saw a flood of 162,877 asylum seekers, mostly fleeing from Syrian turmoil. This surge was a climax in a rising tide of immigration, with the total count soaring to 1,639,771 by 2015, a jump of 18.4% since 2010. Sweden wasn't just opening its borders, it was pouring in support, dishing out over 264 million US dollars to aid those uprooted by the Syrian crisis. This era was a game changer for their immigration policy. Once praised as a shining example, Sweden hit a wall, with crime rates shooting up in the last 15 years. Quick fixes? Not happening. The reason? While others were playing it safe, Sweden threw open its doors without considering the consequences. In the 70s and 80s, Sweden's approach to welcoming immigrants differed from that of Norway and Denmark. They allowed immigrants to select their own neighborhoods. Suburbs and cities like Malmö, Gothenburg, and Stockholm are now densely populated with diverse communities. This choice brought unique challenges, impacting the social fabric in ways no one saw coming. A major problem in their immigration model? Unemployment. The rate among immigrants hit a striking 16.1%, significantly higher than the 4.7% among native Swedes, according to the Swedish Statistics Agency. Although language requirements have been relatively relaxed, they're set to become stricter in 2027. In neighborhoods like Hergarten in Rosgård, Malmö, a striking 90-95% to of residents are either immigrants or have immigrant backgrounds. Their initial approach, ambitious and hopeful, was to demonstrate to Europe and the world the mutual benefits of supporting these communities, providing refuge and helping the economy with their workforce. However, they miscalculated one crucial thing. A considerable number of these immigrants simply didn't want to work. Why? Because in the past, most immigrants were from similar cultures. Plus, jobs were simpler back then. But today, the job market's a different beast. More demands, higher skills, and language barriers. This made newcomers struggle to fit in in society and the job market. When people can't blend into society or find work, some turn to other means. 
This has led to immigrants forming gangs, earning easy money instead of doing an honest job. Looking at the broader picture, Sweden's crime rate isn't alarmingly high by European standards, but the nature of the crime stands out. In 2021, the country recorded 335 shootings, resulting in 47 deaths. By comparison, the U.S. witnessed over 23,000 homicides and shootings in 2020. However, in the European context, Sweden's firearms-related crimes are increasing, with an average of four deaths per million inhabitants per year compared to the European average of 1.6. And gun violence was not the only problem. In 2023, Swedes experienced a horrifying surge of 149 bombings, significantly more than the previous year. Authorities were in overdrive, confiscating over 10 tons of explosives as gangs unleashed chaos in cities. These gangs targeted apartments, buildings, and cars indifferent to the innocent lives caught in their turf wars. This violence forced hundreds to flee their homes against a backdrop of rising sexual violence and hate crimes. There's this saying in their gang world, face four years and become our member. It's pretty wild. If you're under 18 and do a major crime, even murder, you might only get four years in juvie. The gangs are all over this, using kids to do their dirty work because they get lighter sentences. When these young guns get out, they're full-blown gang members with cash and protection waiting for them. But it's not just about the gangs. The schools, especially in the suburbs, aren't cutting it. Many kids are getting left behind, and guess who's waiting to scoop them up? It's messy and dangerous, and often, innocent people get caught in the crossfire. And talking to the cops? Forget about it. There's this hardcore code of silence. You don't snitch, no matter what. Crime spreads like a disease in any society. Other countries in Scandinavia and the rest of Europe are getting worried. Why? Well, it's happening in Sweden, and it's already moving to Norway, and maybe one day, even Denmark. Who's next? We could be looking at a chain reaction, a wave of trouble crossing borders and leaving countries fighting a problem without limits. Sweden, Norway, and Denmark once marched to the same beat on immigration. But times have changed. Sweden kept its doors open, sticking to a welcoming stance on immigration. Denmark, however, has taken a sharp turn, clamping down with stricter rules. They've got a whole list of strict requirements. Thinking of marrying a Dane? There's an age bar to clear. Bringing your spouse from overseas isn't a walk in the park either. And get this, you gotta stick around for nine years before even dreaming of Danish citizenship. Post-World War II, Sweden saw immigrants as a much needed workforce, an asset. Denmark, not so much. They viewed refugees as a strain on resources, a challenge to manage. This model helped Denmark earn an honor as one of the safest countries in the world. Norway's approach was similar to Denmark's. Back in the 70s, as Sweden was opening its doors wide, Norway was busy crafting smart, fitting rules for its new arrivals. If you're from Sweden or Denmark, Norway's your oyster. No tedious paperwork, just a warm welcome. Think of it as a Nordic family reunion. You're practically VIP, with easy access to work, education, and settling in. For immigrants, it's a holistic approach, not just about landing on Norwegian soil, but blending into the fabric of Norwegian life. The government, from the Justice Ministry to the Immigration Directors, is all hands on deck, ensuring newcomers find their groove. Eyeing Norway as your new home? You'll need more than just a dream. Their immigration policy is selective, not a free-for-all. They're looking for people with clear intentions, ready to work, study, seek safety, or reunite with family. It's a way of walking the fine line, aiming to avoid the hiccups Sweden faced in their immigration policy. But it's not all smooth sailing. You see, the ripple effect of Sweden's generous immigration policies has crossed borders, stirring up the waters in Norway too. You can't just put a band-aid on something bleeding out for a while. Norway is feeling the impact of Sweden's immigration stance and is now grappling with its emerging challenges. Crime rates are on the rise, the situation is evolving, and there's growing concern that these problems might escalate. Swedish gangs are storming into Norway, setting off alarms in both countries. 
Norway's Justice Minister, Emilia Mell, and Sweden's Gunnar Stromer held urgent talks to tackle a nightmare unfolding before them. Their criminals are joining forces, especially in the dark world of drug trafficking, turning the streets into a dangerous mix of guns and explosives. According to Norwegian police chief Benedikte Bjornland, criminals are now arming up with weapons from Swedish gangs, and the violence that once rocked Sweden is now a growing shadow over Norway. Now, these gangsters aren't just crossing borders for fun. They bring chaos and terror. This increase in gang violence isn't just happening by chance. It's a clear plan by Swedish gangs looking for new places and opportunities, especially for drug deals. While Norway is getting ready and setting up ways to stop these crimes, Sweden is still struggling. Is it too late to handle this chaos, or can they still make a change? Time is ticking fast, and every decision matters. Sweden took eight long years to wake up to the crisis on their streets. In 2022, with a fresh government at the helm, they kicked off a hard-hitting strategy. Tightening the laws, flooding the streets with more cops, ramping up the surveillance game, and setting up hotspots for keeping an eye on crime. If you talk to the Swedes, many express relief that the violence is mostly within criminal circles. However, there's growing concern as this chaos spills into more public spaces. By the end of 2024, they're boosting their camera count from 1,600 to 2,500. On the streets, they're launching campaigns to keep kids out of gangs, and they're even thinking about using facial recognition to track the gang members. At the same time, they're investing big in social programs in schools, aiming to pull the youth away from crime. Sweden is backing its anti-crime initiatives with significant financial muscle. The judiciary's budget is slated to surge from 69 billion krona to 90 billion krona between 2023 and 2026, and an extra 10 billion is earmarked for the police. These funds are crucial as the police collaborate with Norway to set up joint police stations. This strategy is a key part of their plan to tackle cross-border crime more effectively. They turned a new page in their immigration strategy, learning from past experiences. The country's immigration policies have seen a seismic shift with the 2021 rewrite of the 2009 Aliens Act. It's a clear departure from their previous stance. The once standard automatic permanent residency for refugees is a thing in the past. Now, a three-year temporary permit is the norm, with long-term residency becoming an exception, mainly for quota refugees. And speaking of quotas, there's a significant drop there too. The annual refugee intake has nosedived from 5,000 to just 900, signaling a tightening grip on refugee admissions. For immigrants and their families, the open-door policy has changed as well. Gone are the days of easy entry. Now, securing a residence permit is essential before even considering moving there. Sweden's battle with rising crime isn't an isolated issue. It's a crisis gripping the entire continent. This isn't about assigning blame or fostering negative sentiments toward immigrants, but a fundamental system overhaul. Across Europe, countries grapple with declining birth rates in fragile economies, attempting to address these issues by importing labor from abroad. The influx of foreign workers often sparks tensions within local communities. Balancing economic needs with social harmony presents a formidable challenge. Europe is faced with a complex puzzle and it's far from having all of the answers. By combining vision with action, they have the potential to transform these challenging times into opportunities for genuine growth, unity, and a brighter tomorrow. <laughs>